continue on and finish our worship service uh, to pray for our nation. Uh, we're in a crazy, crazy season in our in our world, and I think it's appropriate that we take a minute on Sunday morning and say, "Let's pray, let's intercede, let's seek the Lord for His hand upon." Our nation, on those, it, it's the work of the enemies. I was praying about what to say this morning. It's the work of the enemy to steal, kill, and destroy. It's the work of the enemy to divide. And so this is not a partisan uh, issue for me. This is not about right or left, Democrat or Republican. This is about the kingdom of God and the advancement of the kingdom of God in this world. Uh, Daniel in several different places and in Psalms it says it again in other places in scripture it says that God's kingdom is an everlasting kingdom that nations rise and nations fall that kings are risen up and kings are brought down but the kingdom of God is everlasting the rule and the reign of God continues on uh, I love our nation I'm proud and glad that I'm an American but my allegiance is to God my allegiance is to Christ and to his kingdom. And my confidence is in Christ and in his kingdom. And so the nations may shake. Political parties may rise and fall. We might have chaos in the world around us. And we need to be aware. We need to respond. I want to talk about that. We need to respond to that chaos appropriately. We don't simply stick our head in the sand and pretend like it's not our business. That's not the response that God calls us to. But we are not shaken at our core when the world shakes around us. Because our foundation is in a different kingdom. It's in a higher kingdom. It's in an eternal kingdom. And that gives us a unique opportunity in seasons where the world is shaking, when the people of God walk in confidence, when everybody else is shaken, Christ gets glory. When everybody else is walking in fear, and everybody else is walking in hate, and everybody else is walking in division, and everybody else is trying to toe the line and pick a side, and we stand there and say there's something greater than left or right. Jesus reigns over it all. I love what Brian, as we were praying this morning, Brian prayed, says, Jesus, you're not, you're not running for election. You're not trying to convince people to vote for you. You are king. Whether we like it or not, whether we accept it or not, he, he's Lord. And that is our confidence. Can I encourage you, though, in your response, because we should respond. We should be actively involved in the place that God has called us to. Over and over, throughout Scripture, New Testament, Old, God reminds us that he, he establishes authorities and that we are under the authorities He establishes, righteous and the unrighteous. And that our response to that is a godly, and it's a prerogative that God has given us to live under the authority that he's given us. Can I strongly encourage you, don't be people of hate. Don't be people of division. Don't be people that point fingers and, 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 call, and call people names. Call out righteousness and unrighteousness. God calls us to do that. Stand for righteousness and stand against unrighteousness. But our battle is not against flesh and blood. But principalities of darkness. So stand for righteousness, but stand in love for righteousness. Stand with grace for righteousness. Stand with the Lord. Be willing to draw a line in the sand and say, I will not vote for that because it is against who God has called us to be as a people of God. I will not stand for that because that is not what it means to be righteous and to be good. It's not what God has called us to be. But where I stand, I'm going to stand in love. And if you stand on the opposite side of the aisle from me, I love you. I might disagree with them. I might not be appreciative of where they stand. I might, I might be actively frustrated and angry because the stance that some people take are so anti-God that they are harmful to the people that God loves. And that makes me mad. But I will stand in love in the midst of that. Can we pray? Can we just intercede for a few minutes for our nation? 
Lord, we're not the first or the last country that's going to endure political turmoil. This is not the first time in this nation, and it won't be the last time, should you uh, tarry, that our nation is going to endure political turmoil. Lord, we thank you for your hand of protection, because whether individuals want to vote for Trump or not vote for Trump, we all have to agree that had he been killed, it would be a whole different story today. And the chaos would be so much deeper. So we thank you for your hand of protection. We pray for our country. Not because you love America more than anyone else, because America is made up of people. And you love the people. Your heart is for Democrats. Your heart is for Republicans. Your heart is for independents. Your heart is for people. And we pray, Lord, that you would turn the hearts of your people back to you that you would turn the hearts of those who are running hard against you and away from you, that you would grab a hold of their hearts, no matter what their political party may look like, that you would grab their heart and turn them to the kingdom of Christ. They would humble themselves before the Lord. Jesus, watch over us. Watch over our nation. Watch over, Lord. The, the, the people of God have a chance to be light in the midst of darkness. And the more chaotic and the more dark that the world seems around us, the more the people of God and the confidence that we have in who you are, we can be a light that stands out. I pray that our reaction, that our action, would draw glory to your name. Lord, we're going to talk today about how your word, uh, you care about our reputation amongst others. Because our reputation in the world around us gives us the credibility to point people to you. May we react in such a way that we are credible. May we react in such a way that we are bridge builders and not people that are burning bridges down. May we react in such a way that shows our confidence goes far deeper than the po politics of this world. Our, our true anchor is in something that outlives the storms. Lord, give us both an internal sense of peace and an external sense of peace so that those around us can see something different. They see our confidence in you. They see our love even for our enemies. For those who would set themselves up against you, Lord, against your ways. Lord, we can treat them in love. Though we are treated with hate, we should respond in love. Though we are attacked, we should serve. Though others strike us, we should turn the other cheek. May our heart be one that says, Jesus, I don't want to be like the world. I want to be like you. And as we live that way, Holy Spirit, start a revival in this land. Start a revival in this land. May the people who have been looking to politics as their source of hope find that it's hopeless. May people who have been looking towards activism and, and causes to find their sense of purpose, find there's a greater cause and a greater thing to be active for. May those who have been putting their trust in humans and people and men and women as those people fail us, may we turn back to you, Jesus. May this country, may this nation turn collectively to you, O Lord, in repentance and cry out to you that says there is one king. And his name is Jesus. May we humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord. May we repent for our wicked ways. And as we do, would you hear our cry from heaven and heal this land. As we continue in our, our songs of praise and worship to you, Lord, we sing while the nation shakes. Because our confidence is not in anything this world can provide. But it is wholly and fully in you. And you are unshaken. You are a firm foundation. And we worship you today. In Jesus' name.